that is basically like chemo for a person. It's an immunosuppressant drug. And he all of a sudden woke up a week ago, um, not acting right with a head tilt. I immediately got him into Dr. Kesha to have his ears checked. And he didn't see anything alarming that would cause what was happening. I had to call into the neurologist was finally able to speak with him that night. They said, bring him up tomorrow morning, which I did last Saturday, actually. Um, brought him up there, and they examined him, and they said they believed it was an inner ear infection. They started him on an antibiotic that is a broad-spectrum antibiotic that they usually use for their Frenchies with inner ear infections. Um, but there's been no improvement. Um, usually by now, there will be some improvement and there has been none so we are kind of stuck in a hard place of what to do now because his cytosar infusion is scheduled for Tuesday but if he has a raging ear infection and we do the infusion then the infection can spread because we're suppressing his immune system now if we push off the infusion, not knowing whether or not it's an ear infection or something completely different, and we push off the infusion to try to give him a few more days on an antibiotic, then we risk relapse of meningitis because we had tried to push the infusion to every four weeks at one point, and he relapsed halfway through the week and started slipping and falling and luckily didn't lose his vision in the one good eye, but he definitely relapsed. So we're stuck in a really hard place where all the doctors agree, look, it's, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. It's, it's just a really tough call. Um, we asked Dr. Adams what he would do if it was his personal dog, because of course, putting him under anesthesia to do the MRI or the CT scan is our best bet to find out exactly what is wrong. If it is an inner ear infection, if it's not an inner ear infection, it's something completely different. Or, you know, if it's the meningitis that's spread. So, but of course there's a risk with putting him under anesthesia for an MRI. So we asked Dr. Adams, what would you do if it was your personal dog? Take all of our emotions, and everything out of it, what would you do? He said he would probably scan his dog. Then he said at the end of our conversation, because we, really we really didn't know which way we were going with it. He said, Dr. Reese is on vacation, but let me call him him a text and see if he can call me and I can pick his brain and see what he thinks. So he did that and then he called me back and he's like, basically Dr. Reese says the same thing I do. It's, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. It, it could go either way with either option. So he did say that he came up with option three, which is giving Mario Trazodone, which he's kind of I'm trying, I tried to push it, but he's kind of out of the way of, of the, my camera angle. Can you come here? Hi. Come here. Can you come over here? Um, giving him trazodone. He's had 150 milligrams of trazodone this morning. Um, to see if we can take a skull x-ray. So do radiographs of his skull. He's like, I can't promise you we're gonna see what we need to see. He's like, but if it's very evident, then we should be able to see it. Um, he's like, but I can't make any promises. So I'm like, I like that option. So that's where we're starting today. We're starting with, can we get him calm enough on just trazodone to be able to do a skull x-ray to see what that shows. And depending on what that shows, we'll then have to discuss the next step after that. It's when I tell you guys gut wrenching, I have not slept all week. Um, 
basically because I'm worried about him, one, and two, because I have to maintain keeping his eye lubricated. So there's been no sleep all week. And there also has been no sleep last night trying to decide which way we're going to go with this and what to do and what is the best decision and what is going to put him in the least amount of harm's way, you know, if, is a MRI going to be harmful or is, you know, the cytosar going to be harmful or is pushing off the cytosar going to be harmful, you know, and cause the meningitis to flare back up and then he could potentially go blind in his good eye and, and it's just, it's the most impossible decision to try to make right now. Um, and I still, I still don't know what we're going to do um, if the x-ray doesn't show anything. I, st I still have not decided um, because I just don't know. Um, now that I'm stopped, I can turn it on him. Here we are. Hi, buddy. You can see the right side of his face is still paralyzed. You know, because this side goes up when he pants, this side does not. Hey, baby. The, ear, the eye drops is coming out of your eye. And you're drooling a little bit. Get a napkin. Um, I do have the donate button on this video as well, guys, for Mario's visit today. Like I said, I have not, I have not made up my mind yet which way we're going to go if this lesser of all three evils does not work. Um, it's, I, I, it's just an impossible decision. It really is an impossible decision. And Because there's risks with every option, and there's risks of not doing certain options. Okay, hold on, hold on. So, please donate to Mario. Please say a prayer. And um, I will update you guys as soon as I get any um, response or or, or we know anything. Um, I need to call them now and let them know he's here. Thank you guys for your love and support. Thank you for your donations. And please pray for a little Mario. Tiffany 100 plus.